Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Susan Kennedy. Much of the work of the Montgomery County Council takes place behind the walls of 100 Maryland Avenue. But in this show, we take you outside those walls and into the community where the work of your county lawmakers is making a difference. First, the Environmental Protection Agency estimates we Americans throw away about 68 billion pounds of food per year. But some students at the University of Maryland are making an impact on that figure. These Montgomery County natives have started a movement to reduce hunger and waste while building connections between our nation's students and homeless population. Hey Mia, can I go ahead? Should I put this in here? Um, is it, if it's both chicken, I... The numbers were too staggering to ignore. More than 60,000 pounds of food... This looks like some yellow rice. At the University of Maryland was going to waste on an annual basis. This is looks like chicken with some vegetable sauce. Students Ben Simon and Mia Zavali decided to do something about it, so they founded the Food Recovery Network. You know, we grew up in Montgomery County, going to all the homeless walkathons and stuff like that in D.C. Um, and being involved in a lot of hunger and homelessness service projects and. Basically, we knew that there was a tremendous need in the D.C. area um, for this food. He's writing down everything that we have. He's just taking how many servings of every food there is, and then we calculate it at the end. This is a good amount of food. I would say like at least 100 meals. You know, food is precious, and there's absolutely no reason for that food to go to waste if it doesn't have to. So we knew that volunteers would be up for it, and it's pretty much a no-brainer. The Food Recovery Network collects the leftover food from the university dining halls and sports events that would otherwise be thrown away. Prior uh, to the Food Recovery Network, all of this delicious food here uh, would either have been composted or sent to a landfill. Um, but, you know, thanks to the gracious support and partnership of dining services, we have been able to uh, recover this delicious food and somebody will be eating this tonight or tomorrow. And they bring it to local homeless shelters, food banks, and other nonprofits. In its first year, the group donated more than 50,000 meals. At first, they said that there wasn't any food at all that was um, going thrown, that was thrown out. But then we saw that there was, so we like, kept pushing them, um, kept asking. Now, like when we come in, they're like so happy to see us. The group consists of a network of different student groups, each with an assigned night to recover and deliver food. Currently, there are more than 200 student volunteers who donate their cars and use their own gas so they can be a part of the movement. I honestly don't mind helping people out. You know, just, just one night a week is not really a lot to ask. But, but what would make you choose doing something like this over, you know, hanging out with your friends? Personally, I just feel like it's a good thing to help people out that really could use the help, and it's nice to actually do something for the community instead of, I can give up one night to hang out with my friends in college. There's going to be plenty of those, but to help people out that need the help, it's really a good thing to do. Both Simon and Zavali want to make the Food Recovery Network a national organization. They are currently in talks with students at 20 other universities who are interested in bringing the program to their schools. Brown University, University of California, Berkeley, and Pomona College have already joined forces with the Food Recovery Network. There are 3,000 colleges in America. We've done our own market research, found out that about 75% of them have no food recovery program. We estimate each school um, probably throws away somewhere around 10,000 pounds of good food um, every year. But each night when the dining halls close at the University of Maryland, group members are on task packaging up leftovers and carting it to locations like the Christian Life Center, a Riverdale-based church and ministry. Good. Good. How are you? I'm Christian Life Center. We're going to go ahead and grab these uh, trays right Mia. On an average night, the group delivers between one and 200 meals that are distributed to the needy throughout the community. Pastor Ben Sly says the Food Recovery Network is a blessing that is making a big impact on the community. I think the, the real truth right now is, is that the need is everywhere. Now, there are greater needs of, of different, you know, levels, but everybody has a need right now. You know, yesterday when we had a food distribution, uh, we literally saw our whole parking lot lined up from people that, you know, were, you know, uh, poor. Everyone needs help right now. And so we're trying to, you know, use this to provide uh, food for not only needy families, for the homeless, but really identifying uh, uh, a 
needs that are from our school system. We work with a family care program out of our school system. And it's just, I'm just so proud of them. I'm just so grateful to be a, a part of what they're doing. Up until now, the Food Recovery Network has been working only on college campuses, but after Councilmember Valerie Irvin got wind of their work, she decided to organize a meeting with officials and stakeholders to establish a county-wide food recovery network. This is a story, um, unfortunately, that's becoming all too common here in Montgomery County in the state of Maryland, but across the United States, and so we're really paying a lot of attention to it, and I am so inspired that so many people want to give back in this way, and I'm going to do my small part to make um, it happen here in the county. Every day we're seeing more and more families that are in need, more and more families that need food, more and more families that have to make a choice. Do I feed my family? Do I put a roof over their head? Do I keep the utilities on? So it's important that they can get food, they can get quality food, they can get a variety of food. And one of our greatest challenges has been to provide meat and proteins. So this is a wonderful addition to what we already are able to do. We just knew a lot of a lot of community service organizations that are like working towards um, similar go goals of like helping our community. Both Simon and Zavali say they are committed to a future in food recovery and would love to see the movement take off nationally. These college seniors say their ultimate goal would be zero food waste on college campuses. And it's only because they see that they, they have a plan. Right. They're just not doing this on the cuff. They have a plan. Mm -hmm. This man right here, Ben, has a plan. He, he's got a plan for not only this local area, but for the nation. And a plan for the nation, 22 years old, running a nonprofit, and college. It's a real balancing act for these two students. It's really tough sometimes, <laughs> Susan. It's really tough. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm. I'm fortunate to have made both of my classes so far this year, <laughs> both of them. Um, I'm hoping to, you know, keep shooting straight this year, this semester. Uh, last semester, I missed a few classes. I apologize to my teachers. Um, but, you know, it's, this, this is really preparing us for our career. You know, we absolutely see a career in this. Um, you know, food waste is not going anywhere in America. And I think if, if we don't stick with the Food Recovery Network forever, I think both of us may end up in the nonprofit industry. <laughs> so. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. This project, the skills that we're learning outside of the classroom, has, in my opinion, been more beneficial than what we're learning sitting in a lecture hall. <laughs> Thank you so much for what you do. The Food Recovery Network was recently awarded a $15,000 grant for its work in social entrepreneurship. Simon says that money will be used for new marketing materials and startup grants to other colleges interested in becoming a part of the Food Recovery Network. Years ago, it used to be athletes would rub burnt cork under their eyes to deflect the sun on the playing field. Though there's little evidence of this actually working, it's taken on a whole new meaning. The bottom line here? a product that is quickly becoming a staple in our sports culture that is unifying athletes and fans, and it's headquartered right here in Montgomery County. Tucked away in a small strip mall just off Rockville Pike might just be one of Montgomery County's best kept secrets, iBlack. This company has started a sports phenomenon of sorts by putting logos, phrases, and other messages on iBlack for athletes this is the product that we have for uh, Brian Erlacher of the Bears. And fans. When we first rolled this out, um, we were rolling out something that, first of all, nobody really had a good idea about what eye black was. Eye black, people, their eyes start rolling up on the back of their heads when you start to talk about it. And then when you start to talk about putting logos on it, they just didn't get it. This unique product, sort of a modern war paint, falls into three categories, retail, team sales, and companies to use as giveaways. United Healthcare, I see mm -hmm. you've got Remax Realty. Ten Montgomery County schools have used iBlack at one time or another. There we go, here's our local team. And the company has 17 employees, all of them Montgomery County residents. I think getting employees from the uh, Montgomery County area has been fantastic. They're smart, they're motivated. Um, they all live in the area, so I think that most people have to drive is like 15 minutes or a, a 20 minutes. So, uh, you know, they're going to work hard here. I had no idea about college football. Um, 
a little bit of NFL, but once I started, probably within a month or two, I can pretty much name any any college mascot, any any team that we are licensed with at this point. iBlack is made with medical grade tape, and to this day, the company has not received one report of any sort of problem with the product. Our product gets tested all the time because we do a lot of work with the NFL. They test all the product and retest it again mm -hmm. to make sure that it's safe. And from a consumer's uh, perspective, that would be very gratifying because our product gets tested five or six times per year. Initially, Beverage says the idea was slow to catch on, but business is currently growing by 30 to 40 percent a year. Last year, six million pairs were sold. The beauty of it is that we can fit five 5,000 pairs in a box of this size. And our focus really is to provide the best customer service we can, and we just happen to be selling iBlack. I mean, I think the key for this is that when the customer calls in and wants to place an order, it's got to be simple, easy, fun. This is a fun product. It's not meant to be difficult under any stretch. In the year ahead, our government will have plenty of opportunities to become more entrepreneurial. There is no greater need in our county today than to create quality jobs in a broader tax base to meet our growing needs. And it's just so fun to have a company like iBlack here in our community. Those of us that follow sports, we certainly see a lot of iBlack these days. And so to have a, a good company, a company that's growing, a company that, as I understand it, hires disabled people, these are the kinds of companies that we really want to grow in Montgomery County and go out of our way to make sure that they can prosper here. Here's three different yeah. flavors of our of our pink product. Whether it's one of the biggest areas where sales are rising for the company is in pink eye black. During Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, sales skyrocket. Beverage says he believes the company's process of always looking for new types of eye black makes the possibilities endless. The fundamental aspect of this is that we have to have a product that works on the field. If you have a product that works on the field, then you can start to artistically make some changes to it to make it more fun for the fans to wear. So why is iBlack such a hit with athletes and fans? Beverage says like it's psychological. When people put it on, I think it makes them feel a little bit better. Yeah. And um, that's the way I kind of uh, see this product. If it just makes you feel a little bit better and it can help you and it supports the, the team or the event or your college or your company or, or whatever it is, that's a powerful tool. So I'm going to put this stuff to the test. I've put on my alma mater, Iowa State. I usually run a mile in about nine minutes, so I'm going to see if I can shave a few seconds off of that time, so let's go. I'm ready to go. I feel pretty good. Let's see if I was able to improve my time. Wow, 8.43, that is about 17 seconds faster than I normally run. Gotta be the eye black. What do you think? Well, you know, you're not that fast, but that eye black, that's intimidating. See, told ya. Well, that wraps up this edition of The Bottom Line. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for tuning in.